All right, welcome back. Step two, we prepared the bank reconciliation report in the last video for Laird Company. Now we're not done yet. Preparing the reconciliation helps us identify any differences and ensure that everything's accounted for, right? So there's no fraud or unexpected items. Now, once we've done that, so that's the first step, the second step is to prepare journal entries. Prepare journal entries. The reason we have to do the reconciliation first is that step helps us identify what needs to have a journal entry prepared. So everything that shows up on the book side as an adjustment, these are called reconciling items, reconciling items. All of these items need to have journal entries prepared. Why? That's the only way we can move the balance to what it should be, right? The only way we impact company accounts is through journal entries. We've seen that time and time again in the accounting cycle. If we want to record an original transaction, we do a journal entry. If we want to record for adjustments, journal entry, et cetera, et cetera. So we need to prepare journal entries. Looks like we are going to have a four. Okay, I'm gonna need a little bit more room, so I'm gonna grab an extra piece of paper to prepare the journal entries using the data that we did together uh, from the bank reconciliation. Alrighty, so the first journal entry will be for the collection of this note receivable. We're gonna need all the amounts, hence why I separated them out in the parentheses here. So all these journal entries will have a date of April 30th. Date, April 30th. We are going to need accounts and of course our debit credit. I will skip the posting reference for now. Alrighty. So accounts, we collected a note. Let's go back to that item information up here, which was C, collection of note receivable thousand dollars plus interest and a fee of 15. The nice thing is we already know what one of the accounts has to be. It has to be cash because this is a reconciliation of the cash account. If we're under the add section then we're going to be debiting cash. So we're going to debit cash for the amount that we have right here. 1035. That's the easy piece. All right, so why did we get this cash? A customer was paying off their account. Their account happened to be in the form of a note receivable instead of an account receivable. But when a customer pays off their account, we reduce their account. So we're gonna reduce note receivable. Leave a space. <laughs> we're gonna need this later. All right, notes are always recorded at the principal. So a note receivable is just like an account receivable. It's usually a larger amount and there might be interest involved and a longer repayment period. So those are the differences between a note and an account receivable. All right, so we got this $1,000. The $50 was interest earned. That sounds like revenue. Interest, revenue. Revenue is a normal credit balance. So let's go ahead and put that on the credit side. That takes care of that 50. Now the $15. The $15 was a fee. Fees, think of that as an expense. Bank fees, $15. The sum of your debit entries must equal the sum of your credit entries. Add this up, you get 1,050. Add up your credits, 1,050. To record collection of notes. Right? And you can say collection of note plus interest, less a fee. You can be as descriptive as you would like. All right, that takes care of the first reconciling item. Our next one is for this error. Again, start with the easy piece. We're reconciling cash. If we're under the add section, that's a debit to cash. Cash, $36. The errors are a little bit harder we have to go back and see what this check was for. This check was for a supplier as payment of Liard's account. We were paying off our account. Normally when you pay off your account, you debit your account payable. 
when we recorded it, we recorded it 1,262. We debited account payable for too much. The correct amount was 1,226. So we debited it too much, so to offset that, we're gonna credit AP for the difference. To correct for error in recording of check for four three. Again, the errors are the hardest and the trick is figure out the easy piece. This is cash, debit to cash, and then go back to see what the original account was. The original account would have been a payment of AP and a credit to cash. That would have been the original entry. We made it for 1,000, oh, sorry, 1,262, 1,262. So we took too much out. We decreased AP for too much. It should have been 1,226. So we're just flipping it for the difference. Alrighty, got rid of that one. Now let's go ahead and address the NSF check. All right, so we're under less. We're talking about cash, so we're gonna credit cash for that journal entry. Credit cash for 42560, 42560 to adjust for NSF check. I did say to adjust there, and for those of you that are like, wait a minute, that should just be used for adjusting entries. We find out in this chapter that technically the journal entries you're making for the reconciliation are adjusting entries. We just didn't want to uh, introduce that in the earlier chapters because we were trying to make it simple and say that cash was never involved and all of that. So technically these are adjusting entries because they're made at the end of the period to correct a balance sheet and income statement account. Fun side fact there. All right. So now let's look and see what's the offset. Think about when we received this customer check, what did we do? Well, when a customer pays off their account, we get cash and we decrease their account. So now they didn't, we weren't able to collect it. They didn't really pay us, so just flip it. So reinstate that customer's AR. Okay, so if ever there's an NSF check, that's gonna be your journal entry. And we'll run it. Now the last one, bank fees. Start with the easy piece, it was under less, so cash is credited for the 30, and it was for bank fees. To record April's bank fees. April's bank fee. Or something like that. Okay, and so now if we were to post because that's what we do after we journalize. Every time we journalize, we post. We started April 30th with a balance of 11,589 and 45 cents. So if we post every time we see cash, 36, 425, 60, 30, we should end up with an adjusted cash balance of the $12,204.85. So we've now successfully done the leg work to get us to the correct balance, which is the balance we identified in our reconciliation. All right, good job. So remember there's two steps to your bank reconciliation process. Do the bank reconciliation report and then prepare the journal entries based off of that report. Let me give you guys some homework so you can practice that. Boom, there's your homework. Go ahead and try PA7 and PA8 on page 570 of your book into the chapter, and then EA11, preparing the bank reconciliation and journal entries. All right, give it a try, and then I'll make a video to work through the solutions to that so that you can compare. All right, I hope you enjoyed this chapter. Bye.